Thank you for joining us on this absolutely beautiful spring day on our California campus. Whether you are here with us in person or you're joining us from home, I want to thank you for being here. Who here is, is this your first graduation attending? All right. And who has been to like 10, 15, 20 graduations? Like you've been with us for decades. You guys are awesome. Thank you. I think that just kind of goes to show the, the depth of commitment to this organization. Um, we are here, I should actually start by introducing myself. My name is Emily Courage. I've had the pleasure of being the supervisor for our graduating guide dog team class. I am joined here by some wonderful members of our class team. We have instructor Arlene Jordan, instructor Jessica Shockley, and Alyssa Berg. We also have resident advisor Marissa Garcia. So thank you guys. We are here to celebrate five clients who have completed our O&M immersion, one new canine buddy partnership, and four graduating guide dog teams. Yeah. We're also here to celebrate all of you guys because we know how much work goes into getting here, right here today. This is the work of the puppy raisers, you guys who just selflessly take these dogs into your home, you work with them, you open your hearts to them, and you return them to us ready to train to be guide dogs. And it's really amazing. I, I've been here almost 19 years, and I never cease to be impressed with our dedication of our volunteers, particularly our raisers. <laughs> There's also enormous effort from our staff and volunteers. We have a lot of our volunteers here today. You guys have had your hands on these dogs since they were little bitty baby puppies. You socialize them, you walk them, you care for them, you help in our accounting department. You just, every part of our mission, you are there helping. And many of our volunteers have been here for decades. It's really quite extraordinary. We have a lot of staff members today. We have members of our facility department that keep everything working well. We have our nurses that keep us healthy during class. We have our chefs that are probably currently in the kitchen that keep us all very well fed during class. There's our veterinary staff that keep our dogs healthy. There's an enormous support team, VFA, field service managers, if you guys are not familiar with the, our level of post-graduation support is truly unparalleled. And there's so many people that make that happen. So I want to thank you all. And I want to thank our donors. I think many of you are aware that we have no government funding and that level of support, including a commitment to pay for veterinary care for all of our graduating dogs, that's all private donations. I mean, that's enormous. So all of our donors, this is like every single moment we fulfill our mission, it's because someone has given us their time or their money to make that possible. I w I want to give a special acknowledgement to the estate of Eric Holtman of Ross, California. They have sponsored one of our graduating teams, Natalie McCarthy and Leonardo. I would also like to acknowledge Lillian Tremoroli for her generous sponsorships. This has been an ongoing sponsorship of Harnesses. Um, I believe it started last year and it's continuing into 2024. All the teams graduating in 2024, she's sponsoring their Harnesses. Yeah. So 
So before I pass the microphone over to, this is another um, guide dog mobility instructor who's joining us today to introduce our OMI, OMI clients, Danielle Toyster. Um, before I pass the microphone over, we want to share a short video about our mission. This video is audio described. So in addition to the narrator, you will hear a second voice describing scenes in the video. Captions are also included. These inclusive features ensure that everyone can access and enjoy this video. Thank you. At Guide Dogs for the Blind, we believe that everyone deserves to move through the world safely and confidently to live the life they want to live. A man and his guide dog walk through a park. Our life-changing programs meet people who are blind or visually impaired wherever they are along their journey, whether that's by matching individuals with highly qualified guide dogs, providing guide dog readiness skills in our orientation and mobility immersion program, a man holds a white cane and smiles broadly, or pairing youth and adults with the companionship of a canine buddy. A young girl cuddles with her canine buddy. Together, we are GDB. My name is Renee Carrasco. Uh, my dog's name is Snoopy. Renee sits in front of a fireplace. So the reason that I wanted to get a guide dog was because I came across some videos from Guide Dogs for the Blind, and that was my introduction to guide dog travel. Renee and Snoopy walk along a city sidewalk and cross a street at an intersection. What I saw was the, the ease of travel, the speed that the, uh, the guide dog handler would move with. That's what I wanted for myself. Um, and not only that, but it was also the companionship. Renee and Snoopy play with a tug toy outside in the yard. Working with Snoopy uh, has changed my life dramatically um, because there's so much freedom that comes along with having a guide dog. It's made the hard parts of blindness not so hard. Renee sits next to Snoopy and gives him a pat on the chest. I feel like my outlook on life and the world is so much more positive having Snoopy in my life. My name is Amit Ahuja and my guide dog's name is Tashi. I had the opportunity to complete Guide Dogs for the Blind's Orientation and Mobility Immersion Program. Amit stands on a path with his white cane. And not only did it help me learn to navigate my environment more safely using a white cane, it also made me an even more confident guide dog handler. My experience was just fabulous. Amit and his o &M instructor analyze an intersection and cross a city street. We trained in different locations, practiced different skills, worked out a way to analyze a traffic crossing. I think GDB has transformed my life. To say that it's meeting my needs would be an understatement. My name is Ella and this is my canine buddy, Lafferty. Ella sits on the floor of a living room next to a black lab. Lafferty is just so amazing in many ways. He's such a good boy. He brings me so much joy and is one of my best friends. With kids with visual impairments, Ella's mom, Christy McKerney. The struggle is real for social contact. It's hard to make friends sometimes. And with Lafferty, uh, he's an automatic draw for all kids, which is wonderful. Lafferty has totally opened up uh, for Ella new social connections. Back to Ella. I would recommend Canine Buddies. They're just, they're just really good dogs and they can change a person's life and make it better. All of Guide Dogs for the Blind Services are provided free of charge and our work is made possible by the generous support of our donors and volunteers. Renee sits next to Snoopy on the grass in the park. We receive no government funding. This organization has made such a huge impact on my life and the lives of so many countless people. 
and the donors are the ones that make that possible. Close up of Snoopy. Thank you so much. Ella and Lafferty. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Amit and his guide dog Tashi sit on the beach and watch the sunset. Together, we are unstoppable. To learn more about our life-changing programs and to support our work, please visit guidedogs.com or scan the QR code. What a beautiful video showing our different programs that we have here at Guide Dogs for the Blind and the different way our dogs can change people's lives. Hello, my name is Danielle Toyster and I am a master instructor here on the California campus. And today I have the honor of introducing our OMI class. So OMI stands for Orientation and Mobility Immersion. This is a one or two week program designed to help improve independent travel skills. Guide dog applicants need these skills in order to qualify for a guide dog here at Guide Dogs for the Blind. The O&M Immersion Program provides a bridge for those who would like to partner with a guide dog but have limited or zero access to O&M services. This program is also offered to current guide dog alum who want to brush up on some of their independent travel skills. Before introducing our OMI class, I would like to announce the names of our O&M team. The OMI class supervisor and director of O&M is Mark Gillard, and the wonderful OMI class instructional team comes to us from Lighthouse for the Blind and Visually Impaired. The instructors are Danette Davis, Chris Williams, Jenna Whitelaw, Josh Lopez, Molly Tunks, and Natalie Castellano. So please give our instructional team a round of applause. And now it is time to introduce our OMI class. First up, we have Kit Lau of El Cerrito, California. Kit lives in El Cerrito with her husband. She likes cooking and gardening. She remembers one time growing a sunflower that turned almost into a tree with 15 sunflower heads the size of dinner plates. <laughs> Kit is currently waiting to get her next four-legged eyes. In other words, she's referring to her fifth guide dog. Hello. I hope you guys are doing well in this wonderful day. My name is Kit Lau. As she said, I live in El Cerrito. I am very glad to enroll to this program. I had four guide dogs, and I haven't used a cane for like 50 years. But I thought I'm a genius. I still remember my way to use my cane. And I was told I had to wait for a guide dog a whole year. And I said, oh, even my cane is still efficient. I thought I may enroll to this program and learn new things and get my travel more safe. After the first day, you know what I find out, what I really don't know what I don't know. <laughs> In another word, I thought my cane was good enough, but I find out I'll give myself 50 out of 100. <laughs> there are a lot of new technique, new term of traveling I never heard of 50 years ago, leave alone using it. After five days with my patient instructor, I benefit a lot more than I can describe here in two minutes. At the end, I thought, I'm glad I am here. Now I can make my travel more safe and more efficient. And thank you very much for Guide Dog to have this program. 
while I'm waiting for my waggy eye, <laughs> I can be travel independently and feel safe about it. And thank you for everybody for listening. If my speech is not good, give me a big hand to encourage me. <laughs> thank you, and have a wonderful day. Next up, we have Judith Lawrence of Toronto, Ontario. Judith is a retired teacher and psychotherapist. She has been hosting an Audible book club for the past 15 years and is involved in many activities with the Canadian National Institute for the Blind, such as yoga and folk dancing. In addition, she is a climate activist who shows up. Judith is excited to have completed her very first O&M immersion program and is looking forward to returning to GDB for a guide dog. Thank you very much. Yes, I've been reading a book called On Belonging, and there are four precepts that they talk about, uh, and it's this, if I can remember. <laughs> People, places, um, power, and um, power, and well, we'll go from there. <laughs> Purpose, and really, it fits for my time here. I um, hopefully will have a guide dog, but I really didn't even know how to guide my cane or have my cane guide me, and so. I came to this place and I felt comfortable. I felt so um, welcomed. The people, and especially help having my instructor, uh, Danielle, uh, uh, was fantastic. Danette, not Danielle. Um, and um, the people, place, and the power, well, it's the empowerment, the confidence that I gained uh, from being here and having this rather um, very good immersion. I imagine, you know, every day for five days, wow, someone like a guardian angel with you. And, um, and the last is purpose. And the purpose, of course, is for eventually to have a guide dog and uh, continue on with my purpose in life <laughs> is to get to the end of it. Oh, well, thank you. Next up, we have Cheryl McNeil Fisher of Walk Hill, New York. Cheryl lives with her husband in New York State. She is the second vice president of Guide Dog Users, Inc., she founded the Writing Works Wonders podcast, a podcast that empowers the blind and visually impaired community, writers, authors, and readers. The podcast has guests that include famous authors. She recently was the winner of the 2022 Vernon C. Henley Media Award presented by ACB Publications. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to... Hello, my family and friends who are watching, and um, thank you to all of you. I want to say thank you to the staff, thank you to all the volunteers, and thank you to puppy raisers. Even though I don't have a dog right now, I want to say also thank you for the donors. Because without all of you, GDB wouldn't be here. And um, I'm going to show you, they wouldn't give me a guide dog, so I bought one. <laughs> And um, you can all buy one, too, if you go to the gift shop. Mine is a golden retriever, or maybe it's a golden lab mix. I'm not really sure, but the photographer, Todd, said I should call him Titan. Give him a big name for a little dog. So I'm going to carry my guide dog in my pocket. They thought they were going to be smart and not give me one, but I got one anyway. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, we have Chris Peterson of Richfield, Minnesota. Chris lives in Minnesota with his wife and two, two children, Abby and Elliot. He is the founder and CEO of Penny Forward, a nonprofit that empowers individuals with vision loss to navigate the complicated landscape of personal finance. 
He was a former software developer for IBM, Lenovo, and Thrivent Financial. Thank you. I have very little time to say a lot, and I probably won't be able to fit in nearly everything I want to tell you, but I want to talk to you today about relationships, courage, no, Emily, this is not about you, <laughs> and, uh, and pride. Um, we all, as students, have begun or sometimes reconnected relationships with people at GDB and also at the San Francisco Lighthouse this week and with each other. And that's really the bedrock, I believe, of a fulfilling, successful life. So I would encourage all of my fellow students to remain connected in some way. I would encourage you also to remain connected with the staff and the volunteers here at GDB. I know that they all care about you and that they want to know how you're doing. Any donors that might be in the audience here in the room or in uh, on the live stream, I would also invite you to uh, connect with us and build relationships as well. It's pretty easy to do that with me um, through our website at pennyforward.com, but I'm sure that other students would be happy to make connections with you as well if you're able to uh, reach out to them. Courage. A lot of people tell us as blind people that we are courageous simply for being blind. And for a long time in my life, I downplayed that a great deal. But the truth is, is that it takes a lot of courage for us to to be here. Um, there are two people in particularly uh, particular that I've met this week, uh, Judith, who you heard from, and Diana, who you will hear from who I am particularly proud of because it takes a great deal of courage to take your first steps into uh, O&M and also into uh, the guide dog lifestyle. Incidentally, I am also waiting for my fifth guide dog. And uh, finally, or, or almost finally, um, I want to point out that it takes a lot of courage on the part of GDB to innovate in the, the way that they do. Programs like the Canine Buddy program, which I'm honestly going to tell you as a student, I wasn't in agreement with when it started, and I'm so glad to say that I was wrong, um, have touched a lot of lives. And programs like uh, the OMI program are very, very, very badly needed in, in the blind community. And I appreciate GDB's willingness to try new things and to continue innovating. That takes a lot of courage, especially from an old, very well-established organization that has, you know, it, it's easy to get set in your ways organizationally. So finally, pride. Everybody that has gone through all of the programs, I, I hope that you feel as much pride in yourselves as I am of you and as I am of myself. Um, as Kit said earlier, when I came in here, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I really appreciate how much I have learned over the last week. And um, it's really helped me to connect my cane and my brain in ways that I didn't realize I even needed to, to know about. Thank you. And last up, we have Susan Wilking of Harvard, Illinois. Sue is a retired registered nurse whose work experience included time in the ER, ICU, and labor and delivery. She currently volunteers weekly at her county's pregnancy center. In her free time, she likes to read and garden. She is also active in four GDB alumni groups, where she is currently president of the Bibliodog group, All About Books, and very active with Paws Around the World, a guide dog travel group. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know that I could say it any better than Ahmad did in the video. Um, I hope you were all listening. Um, we can't do what we do without all of you here. 
the staff, the volunteers, and the family. And I do this every time. <laughs> but obviously, I am not waiting for my next dog. Tomness and I have been together for six years now, and so you're probably going, well, what's she doing here? She's been, this, he's actually my second dog. I received my first dog in 07. Um, I got both my dogs up at the Boring Campus, and it is not boring. Um, but I am a single woman living alone, and there was no way, there was absolutely no way I was going to be walking around town with a white cane. So I only did O&M white cane training so that I could get a dog. And so did I pay much attention? I had usable, usable vision at the time. So did I pay much attention? Nope. I called GDB and said, I got my training. <laughs> I want a dog. And within a few months, I had a dog. And then life continued, and um, I now have no usable vision. I have light perception. Um, I kept my first retired dog, and um, she went into panic attacks every time I stepped out the door with the new dog, so that was tough to go anywhere for very much. And then um, when I lost her, then COVID started. So we were locked up at home for three, just about three years. Coming out of COVID, it was like, what the heck are we doing? You know, I was trying to get independent again. I wanted to go back and travel. My first dog and I traveled all over the place. And so I went last summer to the ACB convention, and I was with people, but they were working the exhibit, and I was just a participant. And I looked at Tumnus, and I said, we got to go back to school. And so I am so thankful that I've had the opportunity to not only come back here to hone and relearn and really intensely learn my O&M skills this time, but I didn't have to leave my dog home. No, he hung out with the instructors all day. He was, so I called a friend the other day, and they said, how's Tumnus doing in his training? I said, Tumnus isn't training. I am. He's on vacation. He's not doing anything. So he got. Th he thanks you very much for the vacation you guys all gave him. And but I thank you so much that you have made us a better. Not only do I have I honed my my white, white cane skills, but you've made him and I a much better team. We have a lot more independence, and we can go and be free and do things on our own. And I don't have to depend on having other people with me. So thank you very much. So all five of these individuals participated in our two-week version of the OMI program, which aside from orientation and mobility skills included audiology, physical support consultation, accessible technology, and independent living skills training. We thank our partnering specialty services for supporting our clients. To the California OMI oh graduating class, I congratulate you on your tremendous accomplishments these past two weeks. You each deserve the opportunity for greater confidence and independence. Let's give our California Oh My Class 25 a big round of applause. And I will now pass the mic to Alyssa Berg, who will be presenting our canine buddy teams. Thank you, Danielle. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I have the privilege of helping congratulate one of our newest Canine Buddy partnerships. So GDB's Canine Buddy program matches specially selected dogs to become buddies to people who are blind or visually impaired, including ages, children ages five and above, and adults of all ages. Canine Buddy dogs are not service dogs, but are wonderful companions that bring joy and connection to GDB community. The Canine Buddy program is one of our core client programs, and the teams have access to the same level of services as our guide dog teams. So I would like to congratulate Pam Baru of Cumming, Georgia, who received Tahiti, a female yellow lab golden cross. 
Tahiti was raised by Pat Whitehead, Dea and Avanti Palan, all from Manhattan Beach, California. So behind me, Pat kneels on the floor next to Tahiti. Tahiti is wearing her blue canine buddy scarf. Pat is petting her and smiling at the camera. All right, our next photo. Tahiti is in her green GDB puppy jacket, lying on a carpet looking at the camera. She is sweetly posing with her front leg tucked under. The background is palms against a wall with a few purple geraniums. <laughs> um, so on behalf of her puppy raiser, Pat Whitehead, um, I'd like to read something that she submitted. Um, she said, co-raising Tahiti was a no-brainer. When we learned we could receive a puff puppy, for me having Dea and Avanti do all the really in the trenches work with a baby puppy was a great benefit of co-raising, giving Tahiti the best start possible with experienced raisers. Besides being easy to work with and stunning to look at, Tahiti always received so many public compliments due to her obvious intelligence and demeanor. She was selected to train new club puppy sitters who had never ever had a dog before. After her stay, they were impressed and are now active as permanent sitters. As a side, we did try to tell them all pups were not like Tahiti. <laughs> I thank Los Angeles Southwest Puppy Raiser Club members for being a part of her upbringing. You cannot raise a guide dog puppy alone. Tahiti is very loyal and will be immediately loved by Pat's family too, I'm sure. Her balance of joyful spirit and calm demeanor makes a perfect choice as a canine buddy for Pat. I too look forward to following their adventures together. Thank you, Pat. Um, the photo behind me now is Tahiti as a young puppy sitting on the grass with her green puppy jacket on. A note from her second set of puppy raisers, Dea and Avanti Palani. Um, Tahiti came to us just as a little eight-week-old puppy. She was the sweetest, most loving girl. We will always remember her as a Puff puppy because we raised her mom, Puff. She had a silly and fun personality, so we were never bored. Tahiti had a special bond with our cat, Smokey, and they were inseparable. She was extremely gentle, and they would cuddle on the bed. Tahiti loved being in the backyard and lying in the sun or playing with her toys. She is a toy girl and can entertain herself for hours. She definitely has some golden in her because she loves people and loves to swim. Tahiti wouldn't have turned out the same without the support of our puppy club, Los Angeles Southwest Puppy Raisers. We wish Pat and Tahiti the best and can't wait to hear about all of their adventures together. So congratulations to Pat and Tahiti and thank you to all of her raisers. Okay, it's my pleasure to introduce our graduates of class 999. Um, our guide dog program is a two-week program where clients are matched with a dog that is compatible with their lifestyle to enhance their mobility. We provide a variety of training models that include both in-residence and in-home training. So our first graduate today is Diana Crane from Petaluma, California. Diana, if you want to come on up here, you're welcome to. Thank you. Um, Diana is receiving her first guide dog, Fortune, a female black Labrador. Fortune was raised by Abby Brown of Colleyville, Texas. Diana is a ceramic artist and teacher for 50 years, looking forward to feeling safer and working as a team as she travels throughout the country. Diana is excited about engaging more with the GDB community. 
Um, she's ready to head home to her husband, Fred, and their cat, Gracie. Oh, good. Hello, Fred. Um, as their first adventure will be introducing the animals. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, it's like you think about this. Oh, my. I, I remember we came to see Amit um, when he was here for class 998. I had graduated from the OMI class last July, and Amit was here. And um, he's just this amazing speaker and uh, college professor and funny, funny, funny guy, and um, I was looking at his speech yesterday, and I said, oh my God, how can you follow that? <laughs> but anyway, I just want to say that, you know, um, my heart is just filled with gratitude. I mean, I think that's the, the best way to say it, is uh, I just got to meet this amazing young woman, Abby, who is Fortune's puppy raiser, um, and I have to say, it's... She, we figured out that she was being born when I was told I was going to lose my eyesight. And here we are standing next to each other up here. And she was 15 years old when she took in this wiggly little puppy named Fortune and took Fortune to high school and everywhere. And now she gets to be up here with me as we graduate together. And um, I don't know about you guys, but being 15 years old, raising a dog for somebody who was going to lose their eyesight was absolutely not in my mind. Um, so I have to say I'm just so impressed that this young woman took this dog and made her into the most amazing companion anybody could ever want. Um, I've worked with her for two weeks now with Jessica at my side. I will hear Jessica's voice in my head for years, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> Stop, halt, right, left. <laughs> and, um, you know, she just, you know, she would look up at me and she would say, I got this. You know, I've got this. She's so confident. And she, we went on a hike, and she walked around all the mud puddles and all the rocks and didn't go into the grass. And um, I'm 75 years old, and when I go to stairs, I want to find the rail. And the first time we went to the stairs, she was kind of in the middle of it. And I said, Jessica, how do I get her to go to the rail? She said, get out the kibble, <clears throat> touch the rail, and she'll she'll learn. And so we did it, I don't know, twice, third time, went up with the rail. Next time we came to stairs, straight to the rail. And she's been going straight to the rail ever since. Now that to me is an amazing dog. So, um, and I also want to say that I, I wouldn't be here without so much support. Number one for my husband, Fred, who has been by my side since the beginning of my vision loss. And um, all of my friends and students and the woman, Susan, who I work with at the Earl Bounds Center for the Blind, who was the one who encouraged me to, number one, get a cane, which I had for a year before I was able to get into any OMI course, um, and then to go get this dog. And uh, it's just the people here are amazing, uh, the trainers, the chefs, the people who clean the room, the, the uh, you know, just um, so, so many people. And I just realized that I first donated to Guide Dogs for the Blind 35 years ago um, because some friends of mine were puppy raisers. And we did craft shows together, and they brought that little puppy to the craft shows with them. And um, so and here I am 35 years later having one of those little puppies at my side. So... Thank you, thank you. And this is Abby. She's the one that deserves the applause. <laughs> well, first, I just need to say how excited I am for Diana and Fortune. Oh, God. If Na Nancy, my club leader, if you're watching this, I, I told you it wouldn't cry, but I probably will. <laughs> I just remember bringing in little seven-week-old Fortune home and like in the airport and she was a little wiggly puppy and oh my gosh ever this is this is what it's all about this is the very first time I brought her home I'm like I'm hopefully she'll be at a graduation one day and I'll be able to speak and 
gosh, it's just, and I just have, there's so many people I get to thank. I get to thank first just all the people at Guide Dogs of the Blind who just run all of this, who just run all the client programs and donors and whatnot. And she's just all the people back home, my, my puppy club, Nancy, shout out to you. And just all the people that run the club. And she's my family. Oh my gosh. I love you, dad. I know you're here. My mom's watching this. Mom, love you. I know I really, I cannot have raised this wonderful dog without my, the help of my mom. So it's really great. And I have to tell a story. I got up here. I, I had to tell a story about little puppy fortune. So she did go to my high school. Yeah, she was probably more famous than I was with my <laughs> if I couldn't bring her to school for one day, they'd be like, Where, where's the dog? Where's fortune? I'm like, nice to see you too. <laughs> um, but so we had this thing at our school called Goblin Day for Halloween where, you know, we got to like dress up and everyone was like so are you gonna dress fortune up and i'm like oh my gosh yeah i didn't think about that i gotta, I gotta dress my dog up and they're like you need to dress her up with something like really strong she, she's like a really motivated dog well i was in pet smart and i came across a chicken costume <laughs> and i was like well she'd be a cute little chicken so i got the chicken costume for her but that dog she does everything 100 percent. if it's chewing a bone or working a new route or something like that she does it 100 percent so I put that chicken costume on her, and she was like, Abby, you want me to be a chicken? I will be a chicken. And she just walked through those halls, just all happy, and she's like, I'll be the best darn chicken like you've ever seen. But gosh, this, is, this experience, just being a puppy raiser, and it's just the best thing I've ever done. GDB is like the best, the best organization ever, and meeting Diana, just such a sweet woman. I'm, I'm just so lucky to meet you and see Fortune. Y'all be the best team ever, so thank you. <laughs> She, she gave me a, um, a, a puppy photo album, and I got to see Fortune as a chicken. <laughs> well, congratulations, and thank you, Abby, and all the raisers. All right, next we have Natalie McCarthy from Seattle, Washington. She is receiving her third guide dog, Leonardo. He is a male yellow lab. Leonardo was raised by Karen Williams and Kevin Versailles of San Francisco. Natalie is returning home to her husband and three-year-old son who are here in the crowd today. Um, at home, her retired guide, Vidal, is eagerly awaiting their return. <laughs> Natalie is a lawyer at the University of Washington, excited to introduce Leonardo to outdoor adventures like hiking, rowing, and all of Seattle's playgrounds. Congratulations, Natalie. Thank you. So I won't take up much more time. You've heard some really moving and meaningful stories today, but I do just want to take a minute and say thank you to all the GDB staff that puts so much amazing work into these dogs from the moment they're born all the way till now till um, and throughout their lives uh, providing support to us. I've been very, very fortunate to have three amazing dogs. I'm very much looking forward to uh, many years of adventures with Leonardo and I'd like to just say a very special thank you to Karen and Kevin. The impact you had on this dog's life is visible and it's very, very uh, wonderful what you did for him and your other dogs. And I really appreciate you and what you do for this organization. So thanks so much. And let me hand it over to you. Okay. Thank you, Natalie. I had a whole thing prepared, I was going to say, but I forgot because <laughs> I'm just so in the moment right now. Um, when I got a chance to speak to Natalie yesterday, she said, Leonardo just seems so focused and he's such a fast learner and he's not distracted by people. And I was like, yeah, that's so true. Like he's a lab, he's a young lab, he loves people, but what he loves more is his person. And he's just, all right, keep it together. He's so incredibly loyal and you know does, does everything you ask. And you know, I was thinking back to when he was a tiny puppy, you asked him to DYB. I won't say the full thing. And um, he did every single time. We have two career changes at home. Um, all three would be playing. You'd give the that's enough command. 
Leonardo would stop. The other two would pretend they didn't even hear you at all. Um, and then we were, I was telling Natalie this story. Um, one of my favorite memories is we were on the Muni, the light rail underground in San Francisco, and to get out of the station, you have to get upstairs. The elevator was out of service. The stairs were blocked for some reason. And I was like, oh my God, he can't ride the escalator. So the one of the people working said, we can get a station manager here and they can shut down the escalator. And I was like, well, that is going to take a really long time. So I looked at Leonardo. He's probably 55 pounds at the time. And I said, do you want to do this? I picked him up. <laughs> he rode in my arms up the escalator. I put him down. He gave a little shake. He shook it off. And I said, okay, let's go. And he just kept moving. So he just always did what you asked him to. And then when we finally brought him back here, um, came to campus, and the last thing I said was I, I grabbed his little snout, his long snout, and I said, Leonardo, go become a guide dog. And he did it. And so we're just so, we're so grateful. Um, thank you to guide dogs. Thank you to our um, puppy club leaders. Um, and thank you to Natalie and your family for just giving us this opportunity to, to give you this gift. So thank you. Yeah, first of all, the thank you to um, Guide Dogs for the, the privilege of raising Leonardo. Um, he really he really is an amazing puppy, an amazing dog, and, and congratulations, Natalie. We're really excited for you. Um, I'll tell one quick story. Is, uh, you know, Leonardo was always mature beyond his years. You know, right when we, from the first time we had him, and when he was about 10 months old, they got called to jury duty. And... Um, Originally, I was actually going to try to uh, get a puppy sitter, and Vicky, our co-leader, is here now. She's like, no, you can bring him. I was like, all right, I'll bring him. So I show up there, and I walk in there, and the whole courtroom is like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting picked for this jury. <laughs> and so sure enough, we get picked for a 12, it was a trial, 12-day 12 trial, and Leonardo came with me every single day. He was so good. He would go, it was a, I had to get up in the morning, feed him, we'd get on Muni, we'd go downtown, we'd walk, and then he'd always DYB before we went into the courthouse. <laughs> he would go through security, always by my side, never distracted by anything. Um, then he'd get into the courtroom, and we'd, they'd let the jury in, and the whole court would be looking at us, and he'd just march alongside me over to the jury box. He'd get in there with me, and he'd just snuggle down with my legs, and he would go to sleep. And then when it was time to get up, he'd get up. And like Karen said, anything you asked him to do, he did. And he was the best example of guide dogs for the blind. He was a walking endorsement of guide dogs for the blind. Every day he went into that courtroom. So it was just a really great experience that I had. He was such a good companion to me um, through that time. And he really brought a lot of um, comfort to the other people, like on the jury. Um, so, you know, what I you know, know for you, Natalie, what he's going to do for you is going to be by your side, he's going to guide you, he's going to be your companion, and he's going to love you. So with that, congratulations. Congratulations. All right, next we have Denise Moses from Corvallis, Montana. She is receiving her fourth guide dog, Piper, a male lab golden cross. Piper was raised by Diane Thiv Theoflu, sorry Diane, um, and Stacy Larson, both from Simi Valley, California. Denise has a retired guide, Tina, at home with her husband and their Great Pyrenees, Blue. Denise enjoys listening to audiobooks and country music. Heading home, she is looking forward to the confidence Piper gives her to go places, as he is a very focused, hard worker who is engaged and eager to please happy boy. Congratulations, Denise. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank Guide Dogs for the Blind um, that they provide such different personalities of dogs and each one I've gotten has been different and and I asked for a male golden and I got one and <laughs> and he's just so calm and chilled and he does whatever you need him to do and he's a fast learner and and I just want to thank the nursing staff and Jessica for 
um, accommodating my needs whenever I wasn't feeling as good or as confident that they just really helped me and um, I want to thank Diane and Stacy Piper's Razors that for all the time and effort you put in and um, he's done a, you've done a great job and it shows that he loves people and dogs and um, and I'm just so thrilled to be receiving my dog and and I love him so much already. Hi there, I'm Stacy, and um, I co-raised Piper with Diane. And ever since Piper was from the get-go, he was just programmed to do exactly this. And no matter what you asked of him, he did it. He rode on a plane, he rode on a train, he rode on a bus, <laughs> anywhere you wanted him to go. And he's one of those, does not curl up, so takes up a lot of real estate. So we had to get over that. Um, one of the most interesting things about Piper was we had the opportunity to go to SoFi Stadium when it opened. I don't know if any of you know a big, big football stadium that's now been open in LA. We were pri privileged enough to get to go out on the field, run across, do all kinds of cool things. Um, the only accident this dog ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Just could not resist fresh turf <laughs> on a major league stadium. So that that will forever be his his mark in time is SoFi Stadium. <laughs> we quietly laughed. <laughs> but anyway, we're so excited for Denise and we can't wait to hear all about their their new adventures. And Diane probably gets tired of me saying this, but at every graduation my favorite saying is from Dr. Seuss, and it's, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. And so, we wish you the best. Ah, I'm Diane. I'm so happy to be here. I will say with Piper, when that situation started with him on SoFi uh, his turf, Stacy had him, I did not. I was standing there, so I ran up in front and I pretended I was taking their picture for as long as he peed. I'm like, oh, this is such a good picture, this is such a good picture. I'm like, he's done, okay, we can go. We were just panicked. I'm like, dog, huh? I wish I could say that, I know I can say we are really amazing razors and we do 100% for these dogs, but Piper honestly was one of those dogs where you're just like, gosh, could it be any easier? He is a gift, and we're so excited for Denise to have her journey continue with her next guide dog. And uh, I give all my guide dogs a middle name. His middle name is McCuddles. So he's Piper McCuddles because he just cannot get enough snuggling in. And um, this is Stacy's 20th dog she's raised, and my 14th. And we started co raising a few dogs ago, and we're really loving it. It's been. Uh, Really great for both of us, for our families, for travel, etc., for our club, because we have more time to puppy sit for others. And people will say, like, why? How many, what dog is this? You know, what, no, people always want to know, what number dog is this? And I just tell people, you know what? Do you want to have the best day ever? Because this is the best day ever. So thank you so much, and thanks to Guide Dogs for letting us do this. We appreciate it. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. All right, and last but not least, we have Troy Knopfs from the Eastern Passage of Nova Scotia. Um, he is receiving his third guide dog, Joel, a male black Labrador. Joel was raised by Justice Hornbuckle of Lake Elsinore, California, and Lisa Nadlet of Temacola, California. Temecula, thank you. I knew I was going to mess that up. <laughs> I even tried to phonetically spell it out, and it didn't work. Um, Troy is an entrepreneur who just started a new business, Accessibility for Independence, which is a consulting service. He and his guide are going to be active in the outdoors, hiking, fishing, camping, and swimming. Troy is a proud father and grandfather with his beautiful fiance. Congratulations, Troy. <laughs> All right, 
what do I say after all these speeches? <laughs> all I can say is thank you so much, everybody, for your support. Thank you, GDB. And thanks to my family for supporting me. And I'll say hello to my fiance students. And I'll say hello to your students back home. I know they're all watching. And uh, hi, Ty, Ty, and Avery, my grandkids. And I just want to say that this dog is such an amazing dog. He is an extension of me. He is awesome. And he's my independence, and I'm so glad to have it back and just give her. <laughs> so thank you so much, and I'll hand the mic off. Thank you. I'm going to try really hard not to cry. But uh, Joel's the first guide dog puppy I raised, and I think GDB and my club leader, they all did a great job of preparing me, but I don't think you can fully anticipate everything that goes into raising one of these really special dogs. Um, Joel was a transfer puppy for me, and before he was transferred, I was told, you're getting a really mellow, laid-back, chill dog, and I thought, okay. And I don't know where that puppy ended up, um, <laughs> because the puppy that I ended up with was, and still seems to be, from what Troy said, just enthusiastic about anything and everything, full of energy, and just absolutely bursting at the seams with zest for life. Um, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I think there was something very special about raising Joel as my first puppy and having him raise me as his raiser. Um, one of the things that I wasn't prepared for when I started puppy raising was all of the conversations and questions that I would get from people. And I think one of the most common things is people telling you, how can you give up a dog? Like, I could never do that. And I do understand where they're coming from because I think they want to protect their hearts in that moment. Um, but I think they don't realize what they're missing out on by not doing that. And I just think of all the moments I'd miss out with, with Joel if I hadn't said yes. So I'm glad I was willing to say goodbye to Joel because that meant I didn't miss out on seeing him with staff and students on my campus. I didn't miss out on seeing him win staff member of the month, which I have not won, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I didn't miss out on experiencing jury duty as well, and all of the church experiences and conversations and incredible things. And I also don't know that I would have fallen in love with puppy raising if I hadn't said yes to raising this sweet little dog. Troy, I'm so excited to hear about all the adventures that you guys are going to go on. I am so excited to see him matched with somebody who's such a good fit for him. And um, congratulations, and thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations, Troy. All right, next I'm going to hand things over to Arlene Jordan for our targeting demo. Congla congratulations, Class 999. <laughs> Okay, good afternoon. Um, I'm just setting up one of the tools. We're going to be um, talking about chair targeting and talk a little bit about um, some of the training that these dogs um, receive. So um, during training, our dogs learn the most of their skills involved with guide, or, guide work through use of a clicker which makes marks a behavior uh, we want the dog to repeat. So you'll be hearing that in just a moment. The clicker makes communication consistent and timely, better than praise or food. Typically, if the dog hears a click, they know food is on the way. And that lets them know they did the correct behavior. We start by pairing the food with the sound of the click. So the click happens, food, they get food. Click happens, they get food. It takes less than five minutes, pretty quick. Um, pretty amazed when you start for, or first training the new dogs. Um, they pick it up very quickly. Once the dog understands that the click means food, we can pair the click with a desired behavior. For example, when they are doing something like stopping for a curb um, or a going into a down position, so doing some obedience, we ask them to go down, and we would click then they get food and are likely to want to do these behaviors anticipating getting the food reward. 
So today, um, Marissa uh, Garcia and her guide dog, Jim, will be helping, uh, showing us a little demo. It's called chair targeting. Uh, we will be doing that today uh, with a method we call back chaining. So what this method is, is the use of the clicker and um, starting at the desired behavior. Um, the desired behavior is going to be this chair. And so Marissa and Jim will be starting at that uh, that chair. Um, <laughs> Marissa, thank you and Marissa and Jim to joining me. Um, and so first what she's going to do is going to first make sure Jim is uh, uh, in the game, I, I call it usually, uh, making sure he uh, oh, wants to receive those rewards. So we do a thing called hand targeting. So she's going to have that fist, and he's going to target her hand just like so. And then she clicks, and he does it again, and he gets his food reward. He's very aware of it. And so he is now in the game. So we know that he's going to go to her hand, and we're going to start this beginning at this chair. And she uh, go ahead and clicks when he um, gets there. She'll go ahead and repeat that again. And as she's continuing with this behavior, she's going to start backing up a little bit. And the goal is for then Jim to start moving towards that chair. Eventually, he might even start moving towards that chair by himself, too. Um, doesn't take very long, especially Jim is a pro at this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Some of the dogs might hear the clicker and really expect to have the reward, too. After Jim is automatically moving towards the chair, she uh, Marissa picks up the harness handle, and he just goes straight towards the chair and finds it, and she clicks. Um, they will start slowly backing up even further, and Jim will automatically move towards the chair. And she's going to start pairing the word as he's moving towards the chair. He's going to, she's going to start pairing that word chair. Um, because the behavior is already developed, he's already doing that behavior. So she's able to pair that behavior with that word chair. And he's pretty amazing. And he'll probably, they'll probably be able to back up a little further. And he's able to find that chair. Ah, oh, what an amazing dog. <laughs> thank you, Marissa, and thank you, Jim. He found the chair. <laughs> so this is a simple technique, uh, targeting technique that we widely use in our client's home area. They can apply this training principle to teach their dogs how to locate all kinds of targets, such as ATM machines, pedestrian crosswalk buttons, bus stops, um, and also chairs. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate everybody coming out. If you are interested in volunteering, joining our staff, or know anyone who would benefit from our services, please visit guidedogs.com. If you would like to make a donation to support our mission, please text partnerships to 50155. For viewers at home, we hope to see you soon. Please join, um, for the viewers here, um, please join us some refreshments next um, door here. Our gift shop will also be open on campus, and thank you for coming.